in case you haven't. All right, so a two state system has an initial, initial and a final state. This is all for gas reactions, right? So let's say you are given um, an initial pressure, P1, right? And you are given some initial volume, and then you are given a, a change in volume, and you are asked to solve for the new pressure, right? So if only the pressure and the volume are changing, oops, then do you guys see how this is the only part of the PV equals NRT that's changing? This is constant. You guys with me? So is everybody with me on this? Yeah? So if you know that P1 or P initial times V initial is equal to NRT, right? And you also know that P2 and V2 or P final are equal to NRT, right? Then what you can do is you can set these guys equal to each other, right? So what you end up getting is P1, V1, I'm sorry I changed variables there you guys, equals P2, V2. Because if they both equal this, right, then they must be equal to each other. Is everybody picking up what I'm laying down there? Cool. I get that, but I, I guess I'm trying to think about like the context of like what would be. Yeah, so anytime you're given a problem where they say uh, an initial pressure was blah and the volume was this, we changed oh. the volume, what is the pressure now, right? That would be a two-state system, right? You're starting off with an initial condition and a final condition, right? So it's not just giving you... Um, you know, a pressure, a volume, and a temperature, and asking you to solve for moles, right, or something like that. That would be a single state. Yes, Kata, this was what you were asking about on the homework, right? So um, you'll see this on the homework. Now, technically speaking, these kinds of relationships between pressure and volume or pressure and temperature are given in the text um, as separate um, equations. Right, so they, uh, if you look at the book, you read, they talk about uh, Charles' law, Boyle's law, and Avogadro's law, not just the ideal gas law, but the ideal gas law has all of those combined, right? So I think it's easier to remember one equation than to remember four. <laughs> um, and if you know that you have a two-state system, right, all you need to do to figure out the relationship between those two states is get all of the things that are not changing on one side and all of the things that are changing on the other side. Okay? So I'm gonna give you one more example. Let's say you had an, an initial pressure, an initial temperature, and then you are given an uh, a final temperature and you are asked to solve for a final pressure, right? Now we'd start off with our PV equals NRT, right? So if we know that pressure and temperature are the only things that are changing, right? We wanna get those on one side of the equation, right? So how do I get pressure and temperature together? Let's say we put them on this side, just for fun. I'd divide out temperature from the right and put it on the left and then divide out volume from the left and put it on the right. Exactly. Right? So volume will cancel here. 
temperature cancels here, right? And what we end up with is P over T is equal to N R divided by V, right? Now again, these guys are constant, right? Which means they're not changing from one state to another. So we know that P1 T1 must be equal to P2 T2, right? And we just cut out the middleman because we don't need to know those guys, right? Does that make sense? Of the homework problems. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, this is the way that I prefer to, to do it because I think that one equation is easier than four, but y'all are going to have, you know, your notes on an exam. So if you want to write down all of them, you can, right? So you could just have this relationship P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Those are all in the book, right? I just think it's better to understand how the ideal gas law is related to those things. So, can we, yeah, you can do an actual quiz problem like that. Yeah, totes. Um, would I require you to show me this step in, um, in a quiz or an exam? No, if you just used P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, I'd be fine with that. If you just gave me that. Okay, but the reason why I like having this way of deriving it is because um, if, if you don't do it this way and you've written down the wrong relationship in your notes, then you might F that up, you know what I mean? So uh, that's the, this is to me, this is a fail safe, right? Because you only ever have to know PV equals NRT and um, then you can always just derive the relationship between the variables that are changing. Does that make sense? Um, if you go through the uh, chapter eight homework from the book, you'll see some examples like this, Alex. So again, you just have two states, right, where you're given the two variables on one side and um, one variable from the other side and ask to solve for one of them. Bye, Jessica. When will the quiz be Thursday? It'll be posted just like last week.